I was sort of thinking that with the base game being free now, and hopefully a lot more of you being able to play The Sims 4 for the first time, we could maybe do a bit of a challenge together. I like to do these things called shell challenges here on my channel, where I build a really weird shell of a building in The Sims. And then I put that shell up on the gallery for you to download and then try and turn into something. I made this shell for us this time. It's definitely kind of weird, it's two stories, it's got a bunch of little weird bump outs and cutouts and stuff going on. It's not a huge build, but it's also not small. This this one is definitely gonna be kind of weird to roof, but hopefully not as bad as some of the other shell challenges that we've done. For example, our last shell challenge was literally just a circle, and that was the worst thing I have ever experienced. So I tried to make this one maybe a little bit easier for any of you who are just starting out with The Sims. Now the rules of this challenge are very simple. You download this shell off the gallery, and you can turn it into literally anything you want. You can make it into a house, you can make it into a museum, if you want it to be like some scary alien thing, you could totally do that too. The possibilities are endless. You can add roofs and windows and paint, you can rotate it, you can put it on a bigger lot, a smaller lot, you can literally do anything with this shell. The only thing you can't do is change these existing walls. The idea of a shell challenge is that all of us have the exact same shell, so like the exterior shell of the build is the same for everybody. So for example, you wouldn't be allowed to like get rid of this little box because that has changed the shell, but if you wanted to draw a wall on the inside and then like turn it into a laundry room, you could totally do that. The inside is all fair game, you just can't add or change any of the walls on the exterior. So I wouldn't be able to like add a wall here, for example, because that's changing the shell of the build. But when I say anything else is fair game, I mean it. You can add half walls, you can add fences, you can add platforms, you can rotate the lot, you could even change the wall height if you want to, you just can't change the placement of these existing walls. We always joke about this, but like literally the only rule is to not touch Simsy's walls. The rest of it is fine, just don't touch my walls. If you're interested in maybe trying this, I put it up on my gallery, it's called the Simsy Welcome Shell, kind of like welcoming the new players because the game is free. Anyway, you can download this and then put it back up on the gallery finished with the hashtag Simsy Welcome Shell. There is also already a ton of entries on here if you want to go check out some other people's just to get an idea of how people do it. But the fun part of these shell challenges is that we all have completely different ideas. Like this person made a daycare, somebody else made a restaurant, this one is like a more modern house build, there's a ton of more traditional looking houses, like there's just so many cool builds here. And it's just so fun how we all start off with the exact same box, like all of those builds are the same shell. Just maybe rotated differently and placed in a different world and with a different inspiration behind it. Everybody is just so creative, it is so cool to see what they come up with. So I want to show you what I did with this shell. Now I'm warning you right now, I didn't make like an alien house or a rocket ship or anything that interesting. But I did build a lovely little generic suburban house with this shell. It's not blue, it's gray, so it's a little bit different than normal, but I did make a nice little suburban with this one, okay? It's just, it's like my signature at this point. Now with my shell, I wanted to try and keep it base game only, with the whole idea being that this is probably a lot of people's first attempt at a shell challenge, they're probably also going to just use the base game, so that's what I did with mine. You totally don't have to do that with yours, if you want to use like every pack ever, go for it. It isn't like a base game challenge or anything, I just happened to do that for my own. Kind of the whole idea behind these shells is just to inspire people to build something. My intention isn't to like force you to use certain packs or to like make it extra difficult or, or make it miserable for you to build. The whole goal is just to give you maybe like a starting point. The whole point is just to get people like inspired to do a build. I like I want it to be fun for you, you know? So if you've got like an idea to do some amazing restaurant, don't feel like it has to be base game only, you know? Do whatever you'd like. And you might have just noticed that a second ago the lot bulldozed and I started over. Yeah, a lot of times with these shell challenges it takes me a few attempts to like figure out what I want to do with it. So if that happens to you, absolutely do not worry, it happens to all of us, even to me, and I made the shell. These builds are really weird, it's like a sort of unique problem, because a lot of times in, in a normal build, if you don't like something about it, you could just like change it. If it's too big, if the front of it's weird, you could just like, you know, adjust it to fix it. But when you're doing a shell challenge, you can't do that, you can't like make a minor adjustment to fix it. You have to like fit together a puzzle of what works in the existing space. It is very different from like your average Sims build. And so with this one, I tried something, it didn't work, I bulldozed it, and then I started again. And you can actually tell that I rotated it and used a completely different angle as the front once I changed it. I like tried one thing, gave up, tried again. Sometimes I bulldoze like five times when I'm doing a shell challenge. This one was a two bulldoze build, it didn't take me that long. Once I tried this angle, it sort of made a little bit more sense for what I was trying to do. Although, and not to brag, but my last shell challenge, my circle shell challenge that I just did, that one was a no bulldoze build, I did it on the first 
try with no issue. Granted, it was a lot smaller, and I had this like cottage idea and no other ideas, so there was no point like trying to change it. And it wasn't like I could just rotate it and use a different angle as the front because all of the angles are the same because it was a circle. So in that sense, it was a little bit easier, but I'm gonna keep feeling proud of myself for getting it on the first try. Even if that first try took me multiple hours, I still got it on the first try. There was no bulldozers involved. I'm telling you all of this to hopefully make you feel better if you ever have to do that too, because I build in The Sims all the time. I build literally every day in The Sims, like for YouTube, on Twitch, and I still do that. So if you ever have to, don't worry about it. It happens to all of us. Sometimes it's just not working. Sometimes you just gotta try again, you know? Sometimes there's just something about it that's off and and it's worth just starting over. I had a lot of fun with the exterior of this house. I think it ended up working out pretty well. There's like a nice wraparound porch in the back, so there's like a big back patio area. I managed to get a really nice like front walkway and it's all landscaped beautifully. I was definitely trying to use a couple different items that I don't normally use too. Like I tend to go for the same sort of landscaping in every build, and in the front of this house I used some lavender plants instead of just the same ones that I always use everywhere. I did use the same plants that I always use everywhere in the back a little bit, but they were purple this time. So that's, that's a change. That's interesting. There's these like little hydrangea looking flowers like this. Well, I guess it's not little. It's sort of a big bush and it's so pretty and it sizes down really well. So I like to put like two of them, but one smaller next to it. I do the same landscaping like all the time. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's just, it looks good. It works well. It fits everywhere. There's a few different swatches. We really need some more plants in this game. They like literally just did an update where they changed some swatches and like added extra extra swatches to base game flowers, and I still feel like I need more plants in this game. I feel like I'm really lacking, like, plain plants, though. We have a lot of flowers, but we don't have a lot of sizes of, like, bushes. I need, like, filler bushes and, and stuff like that that I can sort of fill in around the flowers. I always use the exact same low-lying bush in, like, all of my builds, and, like, one debug variant of it that's, like, a fake piece of landscaping, but I need more stuff like that and in the base game, because we have a few. There's, like, a sort of similar low-lying bush from Island Living, and there's a couple options from different packs, but I need some more base game, like, random size of bushes. I need some like big round ones and some more like long bushes like that. We need the low ones. We just need a bunch more like greenery in this game. That might actually be a really interesting kit. Not to say they should do it as a kit. I would like to have it as a base game update, but I wonder if they'd ever do like a landscaping kit. It's kind of an out there choice. I don't know how well it would sell, but they've done a few sort of interesting build kits. It's just that usually the kits that they do are like more of a set. Like they'll do a kitchen set or like a living room set and they'll they'll kind of fit it in that way. They don't really do like one big list of the same kind of item because I would love to see like a beds kit that has like multiple beds. I don't need to have like a dresser or anything. I just want the beds. I, I would like to have a large number of beds in the same way I'd like to have like a large number of bushes. But in reality, I think they'd probably do like if they were going to do a landscaping kit, it would be like a back garden kit <laughs> and then they would have like some bushes, but also some planter boxes and like some furniture too. I don't think they do just literally bushes. But for me, as a person who builds this often in The Sims, I don't need furniture. I have furniture. I don't even need fancy plants. I literally want just like plain green bushes. I need multiple sizes of plain green bushes. That's all I'm asking for. Honestly, kind of similar to like Dream Home Decorator, how they gave us so much furniture, like so many basics as well. Like here's a few desks with a bunch of nice plain wood swatches. Here's two kitchen cabinet sets, nice nice, plain, but also some pretty colors. It's very clean looking. Give me that, but with plants. I need just a very large variety of really versatile plants. I don't think this is like anybody else's dream pack. That's why I don't think they would actually do it. Because I'll sit here and be like, you know what I need? I need a curtain pack. <laughs> and I just want to have a bunch of variants of plain, like neutral toned curtains in a bunch of different sizes. That's it. Nothing else, just curtains. Like that to me would be a dream. And I don't think anybody else wants that. Although the actual idea that I had, and I made an entire video about this once, would be like a textiles kit, and it would be like curtains and rugs, and just like a wide variety of them. Bunch of different sizes, a lot of neutrals, but some fun patterns. Mostly not fun patterns though, because we already have a lot of that. I just need like really nice neutral toned fabrics to put in my Sims builds. Like a big rug that's got a soft pattern, but like in neutral colors, so you can use it in a lot of places. I need a lot of stuff like that, like the basics. Say 
same thing with curtains. It's just so hard to do curtains in The Sims because you need like such a specific size most of the time. And I don't blame them. Like it is hard to do curtains that fit on like all of the windows, but oh my God, I so badly want to have more curtains in this game. They actually just had a new curtain set come out in that Desert Lux kit, which is kind of a weird one because you wouldn't expect like really nice curtains in the desert patio kit, <laughs> but they had this really cool curtain set and it was basically one curtain panel, floor to ceiling, and they had it for all three wall heights, like short, medium, and tall. And then it also came with like a little curtain rod item basically that was, it kind of looks like a shelf because the curtain rod itself is like basically just like a long piece of wood on this curtain set. But because you have the panel and the curtain rod, you could put like the panel on one side, a bunch of rods in the middle, a panel on the other side, and then kind of customize the width of the curtains. I think this is the most genius thing they have ever done. Like we need more stuff like that. Go back and give me like way more options like that for future curtains, more swatches, more curtain rod styles. Like I would love to see something like that. And it's really useful because that curtain rod item, because it's like kind of thick and almost is like a shelf, you can sort of use it on top of the other curtains in the game. Like you can kind of layer them and like use that rod to hide the other rod on the existing curtains and then like use the base game curtains in the same way. It's a really, really good item. They were giving out that kit for free for a few weeks. They literally just stopped the sale, like just ended last week when the base game went free. But hopefully a lot of you had the chance to grab that kit because it's so useful. Like it's a really great item. Okay, pack wish list aside. I'm starting to make a lot more progress on the interior of this build as you've probably noticed. And something that I unfortunately have to admit is that a lot of the inside of this house is blue. I don't know what it is. When I do these base game builds, I so often like gravitate towards the blue swatches. It's either blue or that like really nice base game green. And I think it's just because all of the base game items kind of have like the same color palette, the same swatch sets, and they all happen to have some really nice blues that also all work together very well. And then a lot of the other swatches are like really bold <laughs> and like kind of ugly. In the like early era of The Sims 4, their color schemes were way off. You know how all the base game things have that like magenta swatch and that like bright yellow and there's like orange. <laughs> there's a lot of like really deep colors and really, really bright colors like hot pink and stuff like that that I just don't really want to use in this house. It's a lot easier to use like blues and grays and like more soft colors. And there aren't really a lot of soft colors in the base game. They definitely exist and they've been going back and like adding more furniture to the base game, but like the default swatches of most of the base game collections are a little bit too bold for me. And I think that's why I end up with a lot of like blues and browns <laughs> because in my mind, blue is like a neutral. When it's compared to the other base game swatches, blue is a neutral. Like I can't very well use the hot pink couch or like even the yellow couch because the, the wood on the bottom of the yellow couch is like that deep, deep like reddish brown. I don't want that. I don't want like a, it's basically black. I don't want like a yellow and black couch. <laughs> I want like a pastel yellow. Give me pastels. They really need to go back and do a swatch update. I mentioned how they did that for like some landscaping in the base game a few months ago. They need to go back and do another swatch update for furniture. And the thing is they even did, like they did that all at the same time. There was a huge swatch update that gave us like a bunch of new wood swatches on some base game stuff, but they need to do it again. They need to go back and give us like some more bed swatches. We need some more couch swatches. Like they, they really need to do an overhaul of a lot of the base game swatches. I don't know. The base game being free is a good time to do that. I'm just saying it's like a refresh. It's like a new era of The Sims 4. Please give me more. I am begging you. Anyway, so this house actually has quite a few bedrooms considering how small it is. I managed to fit in four. So there's like a teenager's bedroom downstairs. Upstairs, I managed to get like a primary suite with a balcony for the parents. Then there's two more kids' bedrooms also upstairs. So when it comes to gameplay, this house house honestly wouldn't be a bad one to download and play in because it's got a lot of room to grow for a big family. There's something about this house that takes me back to like 2016 playing The Sims 4 and maybe that's a bad thing. Like maybe that's a testament to me doing a bad job with the build, <laughs> but there's something about it that like I have fond memories. This house like brings me back to like the early Sims 4 days and I'm like imagining myself playing The Sims on a laptop at my grandma's house. Like that, that's the vibes this house gives me, which is a good thing. Like to me, that's a, a positive memory. Although again, talking about like early Sims 4 days 
doesn't usually have positive associations. Things have changed a lot since then. They've, they've done a lot to make the game a lot better. I'm sort of estimating that in total you could fit like six sims here because I've got one shared bedroom and then we've got like a couple extra kids bedrooms, but you could totally have more kids share rooms if you wanted to. The rooms aren't that small. So if you wanted to have like eight sims in here, you probably could. Although if I were you and I was gonna have eight sims, I'd probably try and find a bigger house. <laughs> I've built bigger houses that are like reasonably affordable for stuff like that. So it's definitely doable. There are a couple like slightly weird things about this house. Like I used doors that I wouldn't normally use on a house of this style. Those are what I sort of use for like more modern houses, those doors. They're also really expensive. For some reason, those doors are like triple the price of the regular base game doors in this game. But I made the hallway quite small and I have this weird thing about not liking to have doors in single tile spaces. I like to have a little bit of like wiggle room on the sides of the door. I don't know what it is. I think it's partially because the doors are like a little bit wider than the single tile. So on one side, they usually clip like when there's a corner there and stuff. I just want to have like breathing space on the sides of the doors. And so where that door is to so the primary bedroom, like right by the stair landing, it just, it seemed like it was way too tight. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to use the more modern doors. I think it looks okay. I think in general, this house looks like maybe it's been updated a little bit, like it being painted a sort of dark gray and it's got like maybe new windows and new doors. It's got like a few slight updates to be maybe like a little bit more contemporary. It isn't like a super traditional floor plan either. Obviously it's not like a modern house, but <laughs> maybe it's like a new build or something. I don't know. Does that make sense? But with that, we are pretty much done with the entire build. So I'm thinking that now once the whole place is finished, I'm going to pop into the game and show you a tour. It's always a bit hard to follow when I'm like spinning the camera around and it's sped up. So hopefully in game, it'll be a little bit easier to see. So this was the original shell that we started off with. And the challenge was to try and make this shell into a, a real building instead of it just being a weird box. Originally, I tried to use this as the front and it didn't work and I bulldozed it and we ended up using this side as the front. And this is the finished product, the finished house that I made out of this weird box. I'm really happy with the front yard. We have this like super cute little walkway, some lovely landscaping. I put these two trees here because I wanted to hide this pump out. I didn't really like this part very much and so I thought I would put some trees to try and hide it. And I think it works. It sort of distracts the eye from it. Over here on this side, this bump out was part of the challenge and I ended up putting a chimney on top. You're allowed to use half walls in the shell challenge because they aren't like real walls. They're basically just like fences. And so I put a really tall half wall up there so it would look like there was a real chimney. Then I sort of put a wraparound porch under it. On this side, we managed to get a balcony. I don't really like how this looks. Like I would probably delete these two little bump outs if I wasn't stuck to them, but I do like the idea of a balcony there. I think it looks nice. In the backyard, we have a really nice big patio area. There's like some planter boxes, couple kids things. I even put a woodworking table back here. And then on the inside of the house, you can see we have a sort of open floor plan. I think that this floor plan ended up working out really well. I feel like it seems very natural and not like I was stuck trying to make use of weird random spaces. Aside from this, I didn't use this. <laughs> I didn't even try to turn it into anything. But when you first walk in, there's like a little entryway and to the right, there's a hallway where you can go to the bathroom or into the teenager's bedroom. And of course the staircase is right there too. I think this is super realistic, this area. It makes perfect sense. This is that kid's room we were talking about. I tried to make it like pretty generic. So if you wanted to download it, you could like have any sim live here, but it's also got a computer and like some useful gameplay items. In the main living space, the kitchen is off to the right. And I really like how this turned out. It's got a lot of cute little clutter objects too, like the aprons. We've got a menu and like this little fork and spoon. And then you go straight ahead into the dining room. There's also like a little sliding glass door to the patio. And then off to the left and kind of the back, there's a really big living space. Again, this just feels like a super realistic layout. And it's nice because these like bump outs, as I call them, they sort of became really nice spaces. They're a good size to like split off into separate rooms with it still all being open. Upstairs, I put like a little hallway with a second computer. I always put computers in my stair landings because it's such a nice way to like hide in a little office space. And then we have a bigger bathroom up here. It's got like a tub. I put some dirty laundry and stuff. We even have things for the toddler, like the little toddler potty. I put a tiny little toddler room right here. They have some toys and things in this smallest bedroom. We've got a shared like pink and blue kids bedroom over here in this corner. And then we have that main bedroom that has a double bed. I put a guitar in case you wanted to try and do like some skill building. They also have an easel on their balcony. And then I turned those two weird little nooks into closets. I wasn't super sure about this, like if the archways looked weird or not, but they're kind of growing on me. And it was nice because there was two of them. So it felt like I actually used the space as opposed to just like drawing a wall and leaving 
leaving it empty like I did downstairs. But that, my friends, is the entire build. And I think I'm pretty proud of this one. I am so curious to see what you make out of this because while I made like a grayish blue suburban, the possibilities are endless. So if you do attempt this challenge and make one of these builds, make sure you put it on the gallery with the hashtag Simsy Welcome Shell so that I can find it. And if you like the idea of shell challenges and want to see some of our past ones, I'll link some of those down below. I've done tour videos where I show off like some really cool builds that you all have attempted and I think you will really enjoy to see those so I'll link some. And make sure you subscribe because I am going to make a tour video for this shell in a couple weeks and you won't want to miss it. But with that being said, I'm going to cut this video off right here. So thank you so much for watching. Have the best rest of your day and I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay? Bye everybody. Okay, we talked a lot about things that need extra swatches, but you know what? The base game siding. I would love to have some more swatches on that. I just use it all the time and there really aren't that many options.